I have strategically placed four lights in today's video, which will then explain how the direction of lighting works. Lighting is an essential and critical element when it comes to photography, and I believe the understanding of it will probably help you to become better as a photographer, as a creative, as a whole, right? And in my previous videos, I have mentioned a lot about one light. Maybe, I think the recent one was multiple lighting. I am going to break away from the one light videos because I would want to talk about the concepts of light. And the concepts of light, which I mentioned in my previous video, it was a brief introduction to the concept of light, which comes with intensity, quality, color, temperature, direction, and reflection. Once upon a time, someone asked me to explain how the direction of lighting works for him, right? And I believe I forgot about it, but looking back to the video I did and also going back to the questions I asked to my Instagram, I realized, oh, there's a video I can do on lighting. And today's video will probably be the perfect chance to explain to you how the direction of lighting works. Talking about the direction of lighting, there are three types of lighting I would want to talk about under the main topic, direction of light. I want to talk about front lighting, I want to talk about side lighting, I want to talk about back lighting. You have clearly seen me use these direction of lights in most of my videos, like the one light Rembrandt video I did, the one light natural lights video I did, and any other one light video on my YouTube channel. When, when we talk about front lighting, front lighting is having your lights right in front of your subject. So it minimizes the shadow, it creates a flattering image, it creates a flattering lighting and also a flat kind of lighting. Right? Most beauty photographers are found using this kind of technique. When you want to determine if your light is exhibiting the front lighting technique, always look at the shadows created on the subject's face. If there is no depth and dimension, that is front lighting. Now let's talk about side lighting. Side lighting comes in different variations. You have Rembrandt's lighting, you have back lighting, and you have side lighting itself. Side lighting means the lights coming in from the side. Can be any angle related to where your subject or the camera is. Rembrandt's lighting, I've already mentioned how you would create Rembrandt's lighting in a studio. When it comes to side lighting, you place it all the way 90 degrees to your subjects, to the left or to the right side of your subjects, picking wherever you want. Rim lighting is a form of side lighting because you place it to 45 degrees to the back side of your subject. Rim lighting is characterized by seeing the lighting or cutting to the side of your subject. I'll be using the strip box to do that job today. Side lighting, I'll probably use another light source just to create a dramatic or moody effect. So side lighting then adds the depth and mood to the image you're creating in the studio. Right. The last then will be backlighting. Backlighting is putting a light source behind your subject. That's where the light source is coming from. So it's behind your subject. I will categorize hair lighting under backlighting because the light comes from the back, but then it hits just the hair side of your subject. I'll be using the other strip box at the back of the background to also do that hair lighting today to see how best it will help in creating the image I want to create in the studio today. So if you would want to create a, a particular mood in the studio, the direction of light will probably help with that. Yes, you. I'll be mentioning some things in there which I've already mentioned in my one light videos, like Rembrandt lighting, like back lighting, like front lighting, loop lighting, any any of the techniques you know these are all characterized by the direction of your light source having all this in mind having all this knowledge of direction of lighting i'll be able to you know minimally adjust wherever it is i would want to put the light sources just to make sure i get the kind of mood or i, I get the kind of feel or the kind of image i'm looking out getting today in the studio so yeah let's just get shooting enjoy make sure you practice this as you watch it on my YouTube channel, which is very important for me because becoming better is something I like for everybody who watches my YouTube channel to be. So let's learn. The video is sponsored by TGD Color Style. So if you're interested in making your images pop better in Capture One, kindly check down the description box below a link to that Color Style. Download it, purchase it, support the brand, right? Most of the images in today's video is going to be colored by that particular Color Style. So yeah, you'll probably see how it goes. I love everything you're about to do today, and I hope it goes the way I want it to go. Don't forget to subscribe, which is quite important for me. Don't forget to also share the video, like it. I mean, do whatever it is you do to a video when you find it on YouTube, which is quite interesting to you. So I hope you learn a thing or two, and let's enjoy creating. Okay. 
Okay. Talking about the modifiers I'll be using today, this is a 54 by 72 inch rectangular lax bank from Impact, as you can see over here. The lights behind that is the Godox DP600. That will be my key light for today. A very, very big modifier. Let's see if I can show it to you. Okay, that's it. The second light, which I have placed strategically, is the 90 Debo Parabolic from Photoplace. That is the Godox AD600 BL. The other light is right behind the backdrop. It's a strip box. It has the AD100, the Godox AD100 in it. And this other strip box over here. I don't know the specific size of the strip box, but I know it's quite long. I've graded this for now. So I don't know, maybe later we'll try and figure out if the grid is important or not. That also has the Godox ED600 in it. So four lights in all. And the camera I'm using today is the Canon 5D Mark IV with a 50mm 1.8 STM lens. And you can see the XTT trigger, the Godox XTT trigger. Yeah, so finally this is done. Ah. And I'm back again. Okay, she's back again after how many years four years um welcome back to shooting this girl this is a new look i haven't seen her in afro before so yeah i bring you exclusive content on my youtube channel period anyways we'll start by using the flat lights and first then we'll move to the various other directed lights and we'll see how we can bring all together First off, let me turn off my light and take a test shot so we can see what the available light is doing in our frame. Right, this is how much light the available light is doing. I would want to also make sure I can see the ambient light in the frame. So let me turn this on. I hope this thing doesn't go off again. Okay, so let me quickly do one test shot again, let's see, yeah, so this is how much the available light is interfering with the picture. I only need available light because of the video I'm shooting. Currently I'm at ISO 100 f2.8, so I'll turn on my light source. I'll start using the flat lighting behind me. Currently it's at 1 over 32. And this is what the flat light looks like. So as you can see, it then makes everything look flat. There's no direction, there's no, you know, depth to this. If I want to quickly expose this, I'll probably open up the intensity just to make sure everything looks interesting. You know what, let's just do that for the purpose of the tutorial. All right. Yeah, so this is how flat this slide looks like. I'm going to turn it off. Currently it's a one over 16. Okay, I'll turn this off and I'll turn off my directed light, which is the one in the photo box by photo place, the deep bowl parabolic. I'll start from 1 over 16 with that one. So let's see how that one also looks like. Mind you, the flat lighting is off. Yeah, so I think 1 over 16 is too much. I'll go to 1 over, I'll start from 1 over 32 now. Yes, as you can see, this gives it direction. It's coming in from camera left and our model right. This it's more or less a form of Rembrandt lighting because it's 45 degrees away from my subject to her right, yes. And you can tell by the triangle created on the other side of the cheek. I'm going to turn that off, then turn on 
our backlight or hair light, which is which is the ED100. So this is how the backlight looks like. So as you can see, the light is coming in from the back, rimming this side of our subject. It's also going to, you know, touch the hair, making sure there's a separation from the background. Imagine if the light was right behind my subject. Right? It's going to create edge light around here because it will be just coming in from the back. And since it's an opaque subject, the spread of light will try and escape on the sides and not through here. So I hope to show you that. But for now, let's enjoy the hair light. I think that is a tad bit too much. I like how soft it is. So I'm going to keep that. Let's turn that off. And let's turn on our rim lights. So rim light will start from 1 over 64. It's supposed to, you know, rim out our subject from the background. Beautiful. But so let's bring it all together and see how it makes the image, you know, stand out. Okay, turn this on that all all right look here what is it all right everything looks flat now so i would have to readjust i want my key light to serve as a fill so currently i have my fill light at one over one two eight what is it here I have my fill light at 1 over 1, 2, 8. I have the light in the parabolic at 1 over 32. My hair light, which is the AD100, not as powerful as the AD600 or the DP600, at 1 over 16. And the rim light, the rim light at 1 over 1, 2, 8. The reason they are all low powered is because of the f stop I'm shooting. I also want to have a little bit of depth in terms of blur, camera blur, right? So 50 mm STM 1.8 lens at f2.8, ISO 100, shutter speed 1 over 160. And yeah, I kind of have my image in the direction I want. It looks great. All I'll do next is to take a couple more shots. The interesting ones that, you know, will trend on Instagram and maybe on YouTube. And we'll probably call it a day. So enjoy as I you know, move the lights around, make sure they work for whatever it is I want to use them for. Then yeah, so subscribe, check out my digital store, the sponsor for today's video. Purchase it, support the business. And maybe we can use that money again to, you know, change the set, buy props and change the set and pay this girl. Okay, so let's start shooting. Not towards the light. But hope hold. Yeah, come back and do it nicely. 